Both men's and women's basketball teams continue to rack up wins. The men remain a top 15 team in the nation, while the women remain on the same path that led to the school's first ever Elite Eight run a season ago. Junior transfer Haley Neiman matched the national season high with 42 points earlier this year. She stops by to talk about that feeling and her decision to join the Argonauts from Saginaw Valley State. So many highlights and intriguing discussions this week on Argo Sports Weekly. And welcome into Argo Sports Weekly. So much to get to this week, and we'll start with women's basketball as we welcome in head coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton. Coach, it's been a good stretch for you guys. You're off to a nice start after the holiday break, but I'm sure it was nice to get a little refresher there during the break. It was. We took a little bit extended break since we didn't come back and play until after the new year. So instead of the usual seven days off, our players had 10 days off. So it's great to be able to get back on the court. I thought our players have been refreshed, renewed. Uh, it took us a little bit in that shorter day game to get, uh, you know, fired back up. But once we kind of got our, our cylinders rolling, we've been playing well. Yeah, I certainly did. And uh, you got things going against shorter. And I'm sure it was nice to be able to get back into the groove with a game like that. We're able to put some points on the board as you did. So, uh, on the road, not a terrible road trip, but you guys were able to get some points early. And Shami Goodman, she had a big game for you guys. Shami's been playing well. You know, I mean, you can see her. She takes the ball off the dribble. She can shoot the three. She can pull up Jays. She's a good passer. You know, other teams have to honor her. Courtney Meyer knocks down that short jumper. She was just a couple points and a couple rebounds shy of a double-double. She also had three blocks in that game. Uh, but Chloe with a big play there. And then Haley Neiman, she had a huge game. Uh, triple there. She had a double-double, 14 points, 12 rebounds. Big game for her. Yeah, we are a different ball team when Haley Neiman's in the game and when she's on the bench. And so uh, we're much more effective offensively when she's in the game. Again, because other teams have to honor her. She can score in different ways. And then Chloe down low. And it's always nice when we saw Haley make the free throw. She was 9 of 9 from the free throw line. I know that's always refreshing to see the free throws go down as well. Oh, no doubt. And Haley's one of those players that's had a little bit of free throw trouble this season. So to see her go perfect from the line is a great growing moment for her. Good sign for her. Bell Bistro also had 11 points in the game. Uh, Monty had 10 as well. Monty had a big game off the bench for you guys. Yeah, Imani did great off the bench. I mean, she was uh, stable on the defensive end. She was able to put the ball on the floor and drive a little bit. I mean, it, again, when you've got players coming off the bench that can help you maintain your stamina in the game, that's a good day. Then it was off to Lee uh, a few days later. Now, this is a tough place to play. Uh, you guys come in, roll in there. Courtney Meyer, that's a little deep for her, but a nice jumper. Yeah, Courtney, you know, this is the game after Shorter where we talked to Courtney about looking to shoot more and score more, and, of course, she did that in this Lee game. Um, but it was a great challenge. Lee's a very good opponent, especially at home. Uh, we played, I thought, 33, 34 minutes of just great basketball. That was a big first quarter, too. 20-20 at the end of the first quarter. Belt Bistro knocking down the three there. Uh, a lot of points to get this game started and kind of set the tone. You talk about somebody that had a big game, Shami Goodman, 22 in that game against Lee. Yeah, she seems to step it up against those higher uh, you know, teams that are above us in the league, so it's nice to get her on the court and see what she can do with see the ball. Haley Neiman step out, knock down the three there. Nice for her to be a presence inside and then outside as well. Oh, no doubt. I mean, again, that helps us stretch our offense. It makes defenses have to play us a little bit differently, and we've got multiple threats on the perimeter. So, um, you know, again, it, it makes – defending us a lot di more difficult. Then a couple days later, is back home to battle Mississippi College. Jade Davis, the drive and the layup there. Uh, Jade had a nice ball game. She did, and played overall great defense, good on offense, one of her better games, one of her high-scoring high games. Um, but she's really coming uh, into her own at that point guard position. And Bell Bistro making a nice move there to get to the basket. Haley with 14 points against Mississippi College. Yeah, and this was a tough game because, again, coming off that long road trip, we didn't get home until about 4.30 in the morning morning a day before we played and uh, so for our kids to come out and really battle against Mississippi College and win in the way that we did huge accomplishment for our team. And Courtney Meyer another double double for her 10 points 15 rebounds her seventh double double of the season. Yes and of course you saw Chloe Branch there hitting that jumper. Chloe's come off the bench in the Mississippi College game and gave us huge minutes. Um, again I'm hoping she can grow with that and, and continue to grow with us through the season. She ended up with a season high 13 points in that game and then how about the defenses as well. You knew that Mississippi College played some tough defense. You guys really played 
great defense in that game. The biggest difference in our defense against Mississippi College was playing great defense without fouling. We were able to keep our major uh, players and contributors on the floor, and I think that's what you saw as far as the score differential. Yeah, certainly look good. And, and when you stay out of foul trouble, it's amazing what that can do for you, both sides, offensively and defensively. Yeah, and you stop your other team from scoring with the clock stopped. You know, so now when you've got that lead, the clock becomes your friend. You want that clock to run, run, run without that team scoring with the clock stopped. So much more to get to. Coach Elton is back to talk rings. Plus, we look ahead to a couple of road tests. Next, this is Argo Sports Weekly on the UWF Sports Network. We will never settle for the kiddie pool. We are destined for the vast ocean of opportunities that await us. We were born to make a splash. At the University of West Florida, you can make a discovery, make a difference, make a splash. So take a deep breath and dive in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Sports Weekly. We're joined by Argonaut women's head basketball coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton. You've got some big tests this weekend, but before we get into those games, let's talk about some rings. You guys got some hardware over the weekend, which was pretty fun. It was a really nice event to have our team from last season back. All the players were here um, to celebrate that season, that Elite Eight run, the South Region Championship, and then obviously to collect the rings. And so, uh, but we had a tremendous night. It was fun for us as a team to get those. Uh, women back together. Um, the seniors spoke at the event and really both gave really heartfelt messages. And uh, But it was, a, it was a great night. Yeah, both Katie and Alex doing an excellent job. Katie Bobas, Alex Coyne doing a great job with their speeches there. Those were, those were some remarkable speeches. How much did you know, Alex, just to give folks a little idea, uh, Alex, you know, talked about the process of transferring and, and, and how that was a tough decision for her. She wasn't really enjoying the game and then she came here and really found her love for basketball again because of the family environment in your program. How much of that were you aware of with her when she was playing for you? I knew it meant a lot to Alex. You know, again, through her two years of being with us, she's a, she's a great communicator. So, you know, she'll say thank you and that she's enjoying things and, and we've had some in-depth discussions in her office uh, with her. Just just the coaching staff and her just talking about everything from life to recruiting to basketball to all kinds of things and uh, Alex wrote a journal entry two nights before we played in the Elite Eight in Columbus Ohio and the letter that she wrote that night she sent it to me over the summer and yeah I, I was crying by the end of it when I was reading it and so when we decided to do the ring ceremony and have the senior speak I thought for sure, Alex, that's what you should read while you're at this ceremony. And she sure did. And I don't think there was a dry in the building. <laughs> no, there weren't. That was yeah. it was incredible. Great, great event. Talk about the rings, because as you go into designing the rings, what 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 goes into that whole process and what are you looking for in an Elite Eight ring? Yeah, you know, for us, the Elite Eight ring uh, was a special ring for us because there were so many firsts last year. You know, most wins in school history, the first ever regular season GSC championship, the first ever South Region Championship, the first ever appearance in the Elite Eight. So all these things were first for our program. So when we dis when we contacted Balfour and started working on designing the ring, we thought we would go with a smaller women's ring. 
well, all the good stuff wouldn't fit on the smaller <laughs> ring. So we, we had to upsize the ring and go for a bigger men's ring so that all of those first and all of, those, all of that history could be uh, put on that one ring. And this is a ring that our players will cherish for the rest of their lives. They may not wear it every day, mm -hmm. but they're going to pull that ring out on special occasions. They're going to show their kids and their grandkids that ring. And they're going to tell stories about that season for the rest of their lives to the special people in their lives. A lot of those rings are going to be on display in offices, on nightstands wherever they're, they're going to be displayed somewhere prominently no doubt for, for, right. for all those young women uh, a great event well let's talk about this season now as we continue to move forward uh, you get into some big games coming up you've got Union then you've got Christian Brothers those are two teams that can present some problems Union particularly first up over the weekend they've been playing really well this year yeah right now I think they're the number one team in our region uh, they've really stepped up they've got a transfer uh, division one player from UT Martin that's really playing some tremendous minutes for them um, but they are a tough team. But looking at our team, I mean, we, we're really focused on what we do and how we do it. And we're right where we were last year at this time in that Elite Eight run with our record. So we feel good about where we are, our approach to what we're doing, um, and we're getting better and better with each game. And so if we're doing that, we're going to end the season on a high note. But we've got a lot of challenges in front of us in the coming weeks. No doubt. It's going to be fun. Hopefully we'll talk after three more wins and – Hopefully we'll be talking about what it was like to get win number 100 as well yeah. as an Argonaut head coach. So all that's coming up next week. Coach, good luck. Thank you. All right. We're back. We've got Haley Neiman joining us when we come back. Also, Argo football coach Pete Chinnick got some national love. Find out what that was all about next. This is Argo Sports Weekly on the UWF Sports Network. We are not here to drift. We were born to move, to change. To jump in, dive deep, make waves, break through. We were born to splash. The University of West Florida is America's best university for making a splash. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? I'll be right back. Hi. You think you're probably sober? Yeah. But you're thinking about taking the back roads home, just in case. If you're probably sober, then why would you do that? Good choice. Probably okay isn't okay. If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. That's a full glass of wine. I'll be chatting you later. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you? Welcome back to Argo Sports Weekly. Argonaut football coach Pete Shinnick has picked up some hardware this week. After leading the Argos on an improbable run to the national championship. He has swept the National Division II Coach of the Year honors. Early last week, he was recognized by D2Football.com before getting named the AFCA Coach of the Year at the National Banquet last night in Charlotte. The award carries a little extra weight with it. It was voted on by Coach Shinnick's colleagues around the country. It's the first of his impressive coaching career. He's the eighth coach in UWF history to win a National Coach of the Year award. Well, we turn our attention back to basketball now as we welcome in junior transfer Haley Neiman. Haley, thanks so much for being on with us. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good, good. You guys are off to a great start this season. Your first year with the program. This has to be a lot of fun for you. Oh, yeah. I definitely enjoy it. Well, talk about the decision. You transferred from a pretty successful program at Saginaw Valley. Mm -hmm. what, what goes into that decision when you're a student athlete? You're at a four-year program, and, and then you decide to transfer here. Um, I think that Alex Coyne really wrapped it up pretty well at our ring ceremony banquet when she was talking about how even when a program is successful, like, that doesn't necessarily mean that you enjoy playing basketball there. And um, I think that's where I was at in Saginaw. I, was, I mean, we were, we were successful. We made it to the NCAA tournament twice, both years I was there. Um, I have two rings, but I just wasn't having fun anymore, and um, I decided it was time for a change. But what is it about... I guess, Coach Yelton's program that, that makes it different than others that you've been in. I mean, even even probably it's, it's obviously going to be different than a high school program yeah. as well. So so what, what makes it stand out? Um, definitely the coaching staff. Like, person, they, you can talk to them about pretty much anything. Like, uh, 
they and then from something that was different from Saginaw is like that coaches like have confidence in me and in Saginaw I'd miss a shot and I'd be like oh my gosh like I'm gonna come out of the game like she is going to yell at me and here I I miss a shot and I can hear coach on the bench be like that's a good shot like that's your shot you were open like it's okay that you miss and I guess that's like the really big difference is just having confidence in me probably helps you relax a little bit and have some fun out oh, there doesn't yeah. it yep um, definitely like it's just you get to play more. You play more like yourself when you know that what you're doing is accepted. You and Courtney seem to have a pretty good thing going uh, mm -hmm. in the paint. It, it, and obviously, you're a little different player. You'll step out, knock down some threes as well. Uh, but but talk about that chemistry. I feel like that's got to be pretty important with you guys. Yeah. So actually, I played with a player a lot like Courtney in Saginaw, and so that helped me coming here, playing with a pretty dominant center. And then Courtney. Courtney's just a different player, though. Like, she, she'll she get on you, but then, like, you know that, like, she's just looking out for your best. And, like, we we both, like, read each other very well. So playing with her is just extremely easy, and it's a lot of fun. You put up 42 earlier this year. Take us through that game. What uh, th Did you realize, you know, pretty early, hey, there's something special happening here, or, or were you just kind of going about it? Yeah, no. So one thing about games is that as I'm in them, I don't really remember a lot that, like, has happened. I guess it's kind of the player I am. Like, one play, okay, you move on from it. Like, you just keep going. Um, but then I was at the free throw line, and um, I heard someone in the crowd, he either yelled, get 30 or get 40, and I was like, Oh my gosh, like <laughs> what? Like, I mean, I, I knew that I had gotten like a lot of rebounds. Like actually rebounds is what well, I was more focused on that game because I usually don't get near as many rebounds as I did as in that game. And so I was pretty proud of myself for that. And he's like, get 40. And I was like, oh gosh, like that's kind of a lot of pressure to say to me as I'm at the free throw line. But yeah. I, I thought you're supposed to clear out all that while yeah. you're at the free throw line. You're not supposed to hear anybody. Yeah. Well, it, that doesn't quite work all, all the time, though, does yeah, it? Yeah, no, because it, it, was, it was pretty quiet. And he, he yelled that pretty loud. And I was just like... Yikes! The the bench erupted when you when you got your forty second point. You broke the school record. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, did you did you know at that point what the historical significance of it was? Well, no. So I, I was shooting free throws after the time the guy yelled at me, and I looked over at the bench, and Belle B looks at me, and she goes, two more till forty," and I was like, <laughs> "Thanks, Belle. Like, way not to put the pressure on." And then. Um, yeah, so I kind of figured that I had to be close because how often does that happen? And, um, yeah, then when the bench went crazy, and yeah. then I fouled out. Good. <laughs> well, good stuff. Well, yeah. it was certainly a great accomplishment. Congratulations Thank on a great you. season to this point. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you so much. All right. Haley Neiman joining us today on Argo Sports Weekly. The men's team has continued a historic start. We look back the last three with Jeff Burkhammer next. This is Argo Sports Weekly in the UWF Sports Network. The world is our ocean, and we are here to make a splash, to dive deep, to create, to develop, to break through. At the University of West Florida, there's no limit to how you can make a splash. Don't just sit on shore, jump in. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Facing life's difficulties takes strength and determination. Whether it's physical challenges or struggles you can't see, it takes strength to ask for help when you need it. Learn how other veterans have reached out and hear their stories of strength and recovery at maketheconnection.net. Welcome back into Argo Sports Weekly. We're joined now by Argonaut men's head basketball coach Jeff Burkhammer. How about this start? I know we've been talking about it for weeks and weeks, and now it seems like it's been forever since we <laughs> talked, but with the holiday break. But the break was good for everybody. Uh, it didn't seem like it, it, it threw you guys off your track very much. Well, we are off to a great start. Good first half of the season, start getting into the second half. Uh, came back, didn't play, I don't think, great basketball uh, when we first got back, but played good enough to win it shorter. And then uh, went to Lee, who was a very good team. And then uh, the other night, uh, another good Mississippi College team. So tough, uh, tough route back, but we're glad to be back playing. Well, was it nice to have a break in there? Do the guys like the break in the middle of the season like that to kind of get refreshed? Or, or do they feel like, hey, they've got something rolling and they want to keep it going? But, but I mean, it's a mandatory break, yeah. so there's nothing, there, there, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, one it's way a Division II thing where everybody has to take that break. And 
when you got things going good, it's kind of nice to continue to play, but it's also nice to have a few days off, let them go home, see their families, and come back and then get through a grueling stretch right here of, uh, of our season. From a personal standpoint and, and a family standpoint, I think it's great for the athletes to be able to get that break. From a basketball standpoint, I can understand where right. it would be some a little tricky. Well, you got right back at it with Shorter as we take a look. Uh, Shorter, it's been uh, kind of up and down, but uh, you guys took care of business, got things going early, and how about Marvin Jones? He's been a nice asset since he's been back. Really nice to have Marvin back. Uh, glad to have another guy that can shoot the ball and has a lot of experience, uh, really played well coming out of the gates uh, for the first time. The defense has been key, forcing a turnover here that leads to points, and then once again, ah, DJ Thorpe, man, he has taken his defense to another level. Yeah, he's leading the league in steals. He's just a really good anticipator, got great hands, and gets his hands on a lot of balls that lead to easy baskets for us. Motier Dang on the baseline jumper. He's looked excellent this year. And then how about this move, Rashawn <laughs> Benson getting to the basket? Really nice move by Rashawn. Spin and lay it up lefty and a really good move. And as you mentioned, Motier has been terrific. He uh, makes a great pass there. Uh, Tucker finishes. and. Uh, really got guys playing well together. And Daryl Tucker has just been a man inside, and he shows it off again there. He has been excellent. It's fun to watch him and, and really gives you some presence down low. Well, and he needs to. He's a guy that needs to give us presence. He's the guy we're going to try to throw it to down there. And then Motier can play inside, outside. Henry gives us another guy to play down inside. So uh, we've got a pretty good uh, group that play well together, and, and it's different guys every night. We've got four or five guys averaging double figures. Uh, so we're harder to guard than a team maybe that only has one or two guys that score. Then it was off to Lee. That can be a tough place to play, can't it? Well, it was a great atmosphere. I thought they did a terrific job with the, with the game. Uh, we had a, a good crowd there to watch us play. Uh, good game. I thought we hung around well. We got a lead for a while. Uh, they've got a good team. They spread you out. Uh, here's another great steal by DJ, another finish. Uh, but a hard-fought game. It certainly was. He's got kind of plays with some emotion, too. And then Daryl Tucker, again, doing what he does inside off a good dish from the outside. Uh, and then in the corner, big three from Marvin Jones. Marvin shooting the ball well again. We need him to continue to make shots for us. Good feed. Tucker makes the guy miss, goes around the other. That is just an excellent move down low. Well, Daryl's really good at, at uh, shot faking and, and pivoting and making easy plays uh, down there. Uh, just a really good inside move. Motier. Dang with a huge three there. Dang again from the wing, and that tied it up late. Tied it up late. Big, big shot from Mo coming off a missed shot right back to an open three and, and nails it. Well, and then this free throw at the end would have tied it. They had the chance for the win just off the mark, but again, a tough place to play against a very good lead team. Uh, overall, not a terrible loss when you look at it. Well, it was a disappointing loss and a little bit frustrating loss because we probably played well enough to win the game. We go 9 of 19 from the foul line, which is not what we've done uh, throughout the year. We've been a lot better free throw shooting team than that. So that was a little bit disappointing. Thought we guarded them pretty well. Uh, we were able to get shots that we wanted, uh, but just didn't finish the game like we, we maybe could have at the foul line. There wasn't too much time to dwell on that because you're right back at it against Mississippi College at home. DJ Thorpe, it, it seems like we talked about his, his defense, his offense has taken another level too. He's really improved his shooting. He's gotten much, much better there. This is what he's great at, getting to the basket, but his shooting has, has improved a lot over the last year, and you know now you've got to guard him on the perimeter and off the bounce. Rashawn Benson had a big game against the Choctaws as well, 14 points, uh, had that big three, and then down low, another drive and layup. He has looked really good. Then Marvin Jones, we talked about him, 12 points in that game with a pair of threes uh, against Mississippi College. And we needed some guys to make shots from the outside. They zoned us the whole second half, and uh, finally about halfway through the half, we really started executing well and making some shots that opened the game up. Motier Dang making some moves down low as well. He's a little more physical this year. Well, Mo's, it's great to have a guy that can play inside outside. That just gives you a lot more versatility, and he, he can do both. He finished with a double double. Then a pair of dunks. Jarrett Henderson throws it down there. Motier Dang on the break. He goes up and throws it down as well. And this so. is where we kind of opened the game up. Mm -hmm. I think it went from like 8 to 20 in about two or three minutes, yep. and we kind of won going away from there. Nice to be able to finish a game. I know something in the first half of the season you weren't necessarily happy with the way you guys were able to finish. You did there. We'll yep. talk more about that on the other side of the break. More to talk with head coach Jeff Ber Berkhammer about his group so special. We'll talk about what makes this group so special next. We are not here to drift. We were born to move, to change, to jump in, dive deep, make waves, break through. We were born to splash, 
The University of West Florida is America's best university for making a splash. The University of West Florida. How will you make a splash? Bye-bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus, right? Probably OK isn't OK. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. Welcome back to Argo Sports Weekly. We continue with Argonaut men's head basketball coach Jeff Burkhammer. We're talking about the Mississippi College game. Before we went to break, we are talking about how you guys were able to finish off that game. You, you, you opened up the big lead, and you were really able to get by them and, 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 and kind of not necessarily cruise, but finish a game, which is something you guys would get out to some leads early. You'd let teams back in. I'm sure that was nice for you guys. We've been talking about having that killer instinct a little bit more. And then with all the veteran guys we have back from last year's team, that's something we probably need to do a little bit better. But uh, I think we're starting to understand that and starting to have a better feel for how to close out games and maybe put people away when you have that opportunity. What's the key to doing that? Well, I just think understanding what you've been doing that's going well, keep doing. Don't change it. All of a sudden, uh, a shot that you may or may not take, you know, with a six to eight point lead, don't take that shot. Let's make the eight point lead grow to a 14 point lead. Mm -hmm. and make the 14 point greed lead grow to a 20 point lead instead of playing to 14 back to eight back and forth let's understand what we're doing well keep doing that and stretch our lead is it just something where guys offensively tend to kind of maybe get a little more relaxed and take some not necessarily careless shots but but maybe not move the ball around quite as well yeah difference between good shot and great shot yeah uh, and, and sometimes you got to give up good shots to even get better shots and you get them to understand that a little bit and then on the defensive end take no plays off make sure we're playing through every possession and and making them take tough shots the defense has taken another step this year and, and it seems like when you look at good basketball teams that make deep runs it's because of the defense sure they've got shooters you've got shooters but now you're able to turn those guys into great defenders DJ Thorpe may be the biggest name of all of them to talk about that with well I think DJ is where it starts with us he's a great defender he's a guy that's going to have their best offensive uh, wing player uh, to defend every game he's got a challenge in front of him uh, he takes that challenge and he likes that role uh, leads the league in, a, or in steals and has done a really, really good job of getting his hands on balls. And our defense has created some offense for us this year, which has been important. And our athleticism, our length creates deflections, and that's been able to help us. The fact that he's able to get that many steals, probably handle, or de guarding the best ball handler on the other team, I mean, that even makes it more impressive, doesn't well, it? Well, he doesn't take it necessarily from the guy handling it, but boy, is he a great anticipator. He gets his hands on balls that uh, guys make passes and don't think he can get there. And then next thing you know, he's got a finger on it and he's going the other way. So uh, excited for DJ. He's had a great year. Offensively, he's improved so much. And then defensively, he's been our guy. I know you were really looking forward to some of these transfers making a big impact, but it's been the returners, it seems like, that's just taken their games to the next level that's kind of helped you fill those voids from last year. Yeah, I think the transfer guys have been really, really good off the bench for us. And the guys that were back from last year's 21 season have taken a next step. I mean, you know, most of those guys stayed here this summer. They worked really hard. They, they stayed hungry. They knew what we had to get done. And uh, it's showing up now. It's showing up with a great start. Daryl Tucker was great last year. He has just been a beast this season. We saw it in the highlights. Uh, I, how did he take his game to the next level? And, and he continues to come in off the bench. There's not many. I told you on the pregame show, I don't think there's anybody in the league that has their leading scorer coming off yeah. the bench, but it works for him. Well, Daryl's comfortable doing that. He actually asked us to do that, uh, which is a good thing because he can kind of get a feel for the game. He doesn't pick up a couple quick fouls in the first three or four minutes of the game. We bring him in after he's comfortable, usually at the first media timeout, and then he's going to play starter minutes. It doesn't matter if he comes off the bench or, or starts the game. So really it's to protect him, to let him be a little bit more comfortable. And then when he comes in, we're expecting him to, to immediately uh, make an impact in the game, which he has done. Two big conference games coming up, Union and Christian Brothers. You haven't won either of those two places since you've been here. This might be the year to do that. Union seems like they're down a little bit. But Christian Brothers, always tough. Right now they're second in the nation, assist to turnovers. They don't turn the ball over a lot. Well, both places we've played very close games, but we haven't been able to find a way to win 
at those places. And if you're going to have a special season, you've got to find a way to win on the road, beat teams you're supposed to beat, and then take care of yourself at home. So we know this is a big road trip coming up for us, going to Union, finding a way to win there. And then, you know, Christian Brothers is fighting for the top of the league. They've got one of the best teams in the conference, two great players back, and they don't turn it over mm -hmm. uh, too much. They're very efficient offensively, and we know those will be two tough road games for us. Christian Brothers, 12-2, and 4-2 and two in conference play. That's going to be a fun one. Look forward to it. And, uh, of course, you can follow along at GoArgos.com. Coach, always fun. Thanks always so fun. much. Let's, let's chat again after three more wins. That'd How's that great. sound? That'd All be right. great. Thank you. <laughs> Plenty to get to, or plenty to uh, keep track of with the Argonauts. They are on the road Saturday and Monday with the Memphis Swing Games against Union and Christian Brothers. We talked about. Stay up to date at GoArgos.com with everything. For head coach Jeff Burkhammer, Stephanie Lawrence Yeltman, Haley Neiman, I'm Tommy Thrall. We'll see you next time on Argo Sports Weekly.